Jamie and I are looking forward to our first private chat with supporters on March 5th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you're already a supporter, we'll send a Zoom link to your email. You can become a supporter for as little as $5 a month. Go to wishidknownforwriters.com slash support to learn more. See you in the chat. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week on the show, we have us. Jamie and I. <laughs> Yes, we are going to talk about um, a video that Becca Sime put out about mm-hmm. how the publishing industry is changing. It's called yep. the new rules of publishing, and yeah, you know, I just think it's really interesting and something that it we is. can all be thinking about. You know, for the mm-hmm. future, mm-hmm. A, a way to structure our businesses. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so we will get to that. But yeah. first, um, let's do new supporters. You want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's okay. do that. So we have two new supporters. Mm -hmm. Um, The first one is Marie Johnson, and she chose a little heart icon. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, Melissa Casera, and she chose the unicorn. Unicorn's pretty popular. It is. I'm wondering if people are using the the emojis to show what they write. Um, Or just what they like. Yeah, because the heart makes me think of romance. The unicorn makes me think of like fantasy or something. Fantasy, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, that's interesting. Yeah. Very good. Well, what's been going on with you this week? Um, this week, I have been working on revisions, mm-hmm. still plowing through the book for like the third time, but mm-hmm. it's, you know, going good. Mm-hmm. And then I've been working on direct sales and I'm going yeah. to do a online signing. I'm just going to say, hey, would you like a signed book mm-hmm. and do like you can order from now through like the end of March. Right. Take, take orders then order all the books, sign them and personalize them and send them out. Um, wow. Hopefully, like if somebody wants to order something by Mother's Day, I'm trying to mm-hmm. get it done so that if people yeah. want something. I can get it out so they can give it to someone for Mother's Day if they mm-hmm. want. Mm-hmm. So I'm just a little bit terrified. But I was thinking about in this video, actually, I think it's the one Becca talks about learning to fail faster. I was going to say, fail better, faster. That's what she says. So, I wrote it down. Yeah. Yeah. So That's I'm like, I'm just going to, I'm hoping I did all the little background bells and whistles correctly mm-hmm. to get all the information, like the sales tax and all that, mm-hmm. but I'm just going to put it out and see how it goes. Right. And if I don't do well on it, it's okay. When are you going to do it? Oh, this afternoon is when I was going to oh, send okay. it out. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and then the other thing was I did manage to get a book bub on that new cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it went well. So it went out on Sunday Mm -hmm. and I haven't totaled everything up yet, Mm -hmm. but it went well. So I think that if you can get a book bub, definitely, Mm -hmm. definitely go for it. Did you stack ads around it or did you just do the book bub? No, I wanted to see how it did just all by itself. Mm-hmm. I don't blame so you. Yeah. It'll be interesting to go back and look. And I mean, that's a hefty amount of money to spend. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's, you know. You shouldn't I, have to do anything else. No. <laughs> yeah. Of... Like if I was trying to hit a list or something, I might mm-hmm. have, but it was free. Yeah. It was a free book. So you're not hitting a list anyway. So I was like, let me just use it kind of as a benchmark to see. Because that book has already been on sale before, and mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see if I'm finding new people, which I think I am. Oh, that's great! That's really wow. great. Good. So, so that's me. What about you? Um. Well, first of all, I think the last episode is the one I said. You know, y'all are probably thinking, "Girl, get it together." Well, I've gotten so many emails from people <laughs> or messages. We don't expect you to get it together, and so that was super nice. Thank you guys so much. Um. But, you know, I'm just taking it slow, not doing a whole lot, Um, just even in life in general. I mean, I'm Mm -hmm. just kind of, I get up, I go walk, I put clothes on and try to put a little makeup on and fix my hair because I feel like that's important. Of course, my husband is going to start Not necessarily in that order, though. No, not necessarily. (laughs) Uh, But my 
my husband is starting to travel. So like I'm going, oh man, this, I could be living in my pajamas 24 hours a day if I'm not careful. So uh, in preparation for that, I have been trying to, you know, do that. Um, Cause you know, Mm, it's not good. It's not good. And it's never good when I just lay around and feel like, you know, if I'm upset, just laying around or lying around, whatever it is, I, mm-hmm. I have an editor for things yeah, like okay. that. Um, you know, it's always better when I can get up and move around and do something, accomplish something. You know, yesterday mm-hmm. I, I had quite a few errands to run. I got a lot done. I have a signing this weekend in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I mentioned, the Charm City Romanticon. And uh, so I have last minute stuff for that, uh, that I'm getting together. But also the, the new thing is, and I posted about this in the group, um, in our Facebook group, but I am, what I have noticed is like, there's still people paying for my consulting services, you know, one-on-one the the cost, because it's not, I don't think it's like, too much, but I do think any lower and it may not be worth my time. You know, I mean, there's just, so, but I'm going to, to, but then again, my, the things that I can really help people with are things that newer authors or authors who are struggling would benefit from. So I'm going to do group consulting. So three people, $100 a piece. I'm telling you how much it is because, um, but I figure even if you're new or you're struggling a little bit, then you can come, you know, most people can come up with a hundred dollars at some point. You may have to work, save up for a a month or two, but you know, Mm -hmm. and then we can, and I'm going to try, I'm going to group them together in um genres that way we're all talking about one genre plus it's an opportunity for you guys to kind of get together and figure out some maybe group things you can do together um so that's that's kind of the new thing I'm gonna I'm doing and um I think that's a great idea yeah that's really good mm -hmm. yeah I I, well I hope so I I just I want it to I want to lower the barrier to entry, right. but I need to do it in a way that still benefits me and makes things, you know, if I give my time makes, to it, then right. it's, you know, it makes, a, it makes sense for you to do it because yeah. that is the problem when yeah. you're trying to do like coaching mm-hmm. slash consulting. It's like mm-hmm. your time yeah. and the effort that goes into it and everything. You have to kind of balance that out. So I right, think right. Good. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I don't have a problem saying that I know a thing or two about a thing or two. So, you know, I mean, there is value in that. There is value yeah. in being able to go to someone and say that, you know, and say, here's the problem. Mm-hmm. Help me fix it. And we fix it yeah. right there or give you yeah. steps and to then, fix it. And if you're in a group, you're going to mm-hmm. learn more than if it's just one on one, because you're going to be able to see, right. oh, look, they did this and I'll give you ideas. Right. Maybe right. you may not, you know, so you may not be talking to one person. Mm-hmm. One person that may hear your advice to somebody else and sure. maybe able to apply it. So yeah. that's yeah. great. So, yeah. um, but I mean, you know, like certainly if I was writing, it would, you know, I have to make sure it's worth my time. But also right now, just the emotional energy that I'm expending mm-hmm. every day, just surviving, um, mm-hmm. you know, that, that still has, you know, a cost. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, so yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Not much else going on. I watched Ted Lasso last week. Oh yeah, it wasn't the woohoo I was hoping for, but it was good. It was uh-huh. good, and I'm I am hopeful for this week that it is um, equally I think it, as good. I think it was like the lead in to yeah, the new series. It was, no, it's like it was. like we're on to, the runway. They had to set everything up. Yep. You know. Yeah, and, and there's certain uh, things that like you. I thought, okay, now we're seeing these things being set up. Mm-hmm. And I, my husband and I was like, okay, these are my predictions for what will happen this mm-hmm. season with mm-hmm. all these different characters. And yeah. we'll see if yeah. they come true or not. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I thought they did a pretty good job of making you not completely hate um, Nick. Nick. Is it Nick? No, it's a Nick. 
Nate. 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 Sorry. Nate. Nate the Great. <laughs> I did watch it too. <laughs> no, no. I was thinking Ned and I was like, no way, they wouldn't have Ned and Ted. So, um, but yeah, Nate, like you still don't, you know, you're like, he's still on the poop list, but he is not, he's, you know, I still see a little bit of the vulnerability. So hopefully, yeah. you know, but um Anyway, yeah, that's what's yeah. been going on with us. Not much else. Um, yeah. Oh, we went to the rodeo uh, oh, last nice. Friday and saw Cody Johnson. Oh, my gosh, it was so good. He was awesome. Yeah. I don't know how many people that listen to us are country music fans, but um, Cody Johnson, I mean, it was one of the best shows I've seen in a long time. Of course, I haven't been to a show in a long time, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So, but it was so good. take that for what it's <laughs> worth. And then Saturday we had a wedding in uh, um, Dallas, and I mean not Dallas in Austin with um, some of our you know my ride or die friends that I've had mm-hmm. forever. Uh, one of their daughters got married, so that was mm-hmm. very fun, and it was good to go and see anybody. But here's a little funny story. Um, so I had this dress. That I wore to another wedding that I really loved, but it, it once I got to the first wedding, I realized it was kind of too long. It was hard to dance in. Couldn't get my groove oh, on. We well, have to fix that, yes, right? Yes, exactly. And so I was going to have to have it altered. Yeah. But then I realized because I got that dress on the one I really loved on Amazon, and it wasn't very expensive. And I was, I was like, you know what? For what I'm going to spend to get this altered, I can just get another dress. So I got this other dress and get there. And one of my best friends, I mean, there are six of us that were all, you know, our kids all grew up together and everything. She had on the same dress. Oh, no. <laughs> and she was like, I think it's funny. And I was like, oh, yeah, me too. No, I don't. And like, <laughs> And she's about a bit as big as a toothpick. And I was like, I would pick the dress that the, you know. That is tooth- so funny. Yeah, it was funny. It was, oh I mean, my gosh. it was I mean, funny. It's, but- it's funny now, but I'm sure yeah. at the time you were like, mm, great. I was like, well, I'm going to keep my jacket on. Yeah, no, it was fun. <laughs> but um, anyway, so that's what's going on with me. I, I went on yeah. a long time. So we can oh, get okay. to the to Becca's. Okay, stuff. well, I would yeah. just, I was just going to say quickly that if you came on and you were like, yeah, everything's fine. You know, you said you had gotten a lot of email from yeah. readers or listeners yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And you were like, everything's fine. I'm fine. We would be like, mm-hmm. Right. Jamie. I know. So, I know. <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> it is okay. I know. Well, you know, it's it, it's so funny because last Friday night, because we had those rodeo tickets, so we weren't able to go to this thing. My sister was a coach and uh, she was, she helped coach the softball team and, um, at one of the schools kind of around where we, you know, Kaufman where I grew up and um, they, it was their opening game, opening home game. And they did a whole tribute thing to her. So my whole family went except for us. And they were on Saturday, they were all talking about it and there were some hats and they, my sister, my other sister was like, did y'all want hats because they have them and they, they wanted to give, make sure we all got one. And, um, we were just talking and as they're talking about how, what went on and who did what and all this stuff, it just hit me like out of the blue that she is not here. I mean, you know, y'all would think that that is because it is a constant in my life right now, Mm -hmm. but just the reality of it hit me. And we were sitting, Chris and I were sitting at Torchy's Tacos and I just had to put my head down for a minute. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is how, and we're what, six months out now, almost six months out, October. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Almost six months out. And I, yeah. But that's like the nature of grief. It's unpredictable and you just don't know. And so so no, again, just not day a grief day. podcast. <laughs> yeah, not a grief podcast. <laughs> That's right. But if that you're going right. through stuff, but know this, that you just don't get over it. Yeah, That's the point. No matter what you have in your life, you may not have that, but we're going to have other things that happen, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. changes in the market that we have to learn to deal with. Yeah. And so I think And it's I will totally say fun. that listening to Becca's um talk really was encouraging for me uh, yeah. on more than one level. But you know, the fact is. I am not producing. I don't know when I will produce. And right. 
Ooh, that is just terrifying. that's a hard thing to even say. It's isn't it? hard yeah. to even say it, but you know, I'm always about being real on here. Y'all know yeah. that. And um, that's the way we've done this from the beginning. Yeah, so. From the beginning. Yeah. So um, listening to her, it was encouraging. So we can yeah. talk about what Yeah. So doing. let's get into that. Oh, I have one other thing to tell y'all about. Uh, Greta and Megan over at the Author Real Podcast are doing a seven day course on author branding. It's an email course and it's all about like how to, um, concise, be concise and boil your brand down to a single sentence and apply your branding to f- future story ideas and reader expectations. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. It sounds really good. Uh, we'll have the link in the show notes and it is subscribepage.com slash author brand challenge. So first yeah. I'll say that the video that I listened to and Jamie listened to, it's called mm-hmm. the new rules of publishing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a series, a short series that Becca Simes doing on the quick cast So it's a YouTube video. I'll link to it in the show notes. And it's basically talking about how the market has changed. Mm -hmm. And I think like listening to that and thinking back over like the last couple of years, I think we've been seeing this change like Mm -hmm. all along, like the, remember how used to, you had a 90 day cliff and Mm -hmm. then it became a 60 and a 30. Mm -hmm. And you, there used to be this philosophy that if you could write three books, you'd be making money. Or if you mm-hmm. then it became five books, you mm-hmm. could make money and mm-hmm. then six. And so things are not the way they used to be. And I think no. gradually it's gotten to where the market has so many books in it now that the strategies it's, that we used five years ago or mm-hmm. three years ago mm-hmm. don't work. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody just posted the other day and said, y'all, there are 12 million books on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not surprised. I, I actually think that may, I hope that may be low. I don't know, but <laughs> she, that's what uh, she said. And I mean, the market is just saturated. That's the bottom mm-hmm. line. And any business has to perform differently and do things differently in a saturated market. They just right. do. So, yeah. And before, like a couple of years ago, there, there were like Becca's and other businesses describe it this way. There was more blue water mm-hmm. versus red water. There was like plenty right. of open spaces that hadn't been like exploited, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. Or explored. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now pretty much like I go in and I look at my Amazon page and there are so many authors. Mm -hmm. And part of it is the ads, you know, because there's so many ads for books Mm -hmm. that there didn't used to be that readers are spoiled for choice. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, in fact, I met an author in, I think it was 2010, 2011 and I was still traditionally published mm-hmm. and he was indie and he said he, we were at a writer's conference and he said, yeah, he said, I'll put book one on sale. And he said, people go through and they just buy two, three, four, five, six, cause they didn't have mm-hmm. that much choice and that much right. content. Not that those books weren't good, but right. just, there was just not that much. And we're mm-hmm. definitely mm-hmm. out of that phase. So basically mm-hmm. the gold rush is over. And mm-hmm. I think we both agree, right? <laughs> yeah, we do agree. Um, um, and I think that, you know, we saw that pretty, or I did, I don't know about all of us, everybody, but we saw that pretty plainly when in 2020 when people started putting a lot of books for free to help people. You know, I, I just used my <laughs> hand and almost ripped my ear out with my ear, my headphones. Right. Um, but yeah, we we put we were trying to help people, so we all put books for on free, and it really saturated the market. Um, mm-hmm. Along with all the other books, that just the trends. Free. And, yeah, yeah, it was, the, and that's when I started stop seeing the read through like I had seen the read through, and I, it was shocking, and I couldn't figure it out. I could not understand what was happening, and you know, looking back now, I can see that pretty clearly, but it's the same. I mean, it's the same thing. Becca's talking about the same thing. So, Mm -hmm. but, and we, we had back in the quote unquote gold rush, I would say before 2020, wouldn't you say 2019 was like, a yeah, oh my gosh, it was such a good year. Um, yeah, but 2020 and that COVID might have, um, accelerated this but um it was coming but we had a horizontal market where Mm -hmm. you books and and 
you know, I mean, we just, we could all put out books and it was mm-hmm. people just lined up to read them all and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's just not what it is mm-hmm. now. Yeah. She, she calls it a vertical uh, vertical market now, right? Right. Or, yeah. Or, so yeah. this was like, I would say definitely go listen to the podcast, mm-hmm. Becca's podcast, because she describes this so much better and she I was gonna say, really goes into bas- detail. Bastardizing it. And so, <laughs> sorry, we're, Becca. We're, I was going to say we're kind of bouncing off of it. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, we'll see. That's the difference in the two of us. <laughs> So oh. I will try and give a quick summary of, yes, you of do vertical it. because basically yes. the, the, the podcast is about um, like how you can have, instead of your whole business philosophy is just books and books and more books, which would be like a horizontal, I mm-hmm. guess, mm-hmm. would be you have verticals where you try and get people to come into like your, she described it as like a little alleyway. Like if if readers are pac men going along, you want them to turn and go up your alley and delve into your content and get deeper and deeper and deeper into whatever you're producing. So um, she described it. She said, it's all this a vertical is all the stuff a reader could potentially consume in our platform, like newsletters, social media, books, lead magnets, different formats, fan experiences, discussions, Patreon, like anything you can think of that could be related to your books. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so that was like, she's th- she's saying we need to change the way we're thinking instead of just thinking. I think the thinking for a long time has been, I must write more books. Mm-hmm. I must get more books out. Mm-hmm. And now she's like, we need to change our thinking mm-hmm. and start thinking about how we can create these verticals that will pull in readers and give mm-hmm. them more of our stuff. And it doesn't necessarily have to be more books. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Thank God. Um, (laughs) And she, and she specifics to say that you don't have to spend, you don't have to write a book a month or spend all your time on social media either to do these. And there are three, um, primarily three vertical platforms, the books, the person and the world. Yeah. So we were thinking we would just talk through these really quickly and like, like give a quick summary mm-hmm. of how Becca described it. And then if we can think of some examples of authors, yep. then we'll mention those yep. and then just kind of talk about what this means, like in the big picture yep. for writers. So, so books, um, mm-hmm. Becca says the uh, product itself is something that is about meeting a need. It's entertaining. It's comforting. It's humor. People are going to, in author's books to get a certain feeling. And it's the mm-hmm. books themselves that the people are most drawn to. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I was just like, I think it, she said books are the main thing. If you write content quickly, this could be mm-hmm. a good way yes. to do it for you. Or if you have a big backlist already, mm-hmm. this could be good for you. Yeah. You yes. bring them into that vertical alleyway and they just have all this other stuff to consume from you because you've got a big backlist. Yeah. And one of her points was that it's not necessarily that all the books are the same. Like mm-hmm. if like if you write small town and another genre that's very close, mm-hmm. because of the type of books you're writing, mm-hmm. the people want the readers want that feeling that that mm-hmm. produces. And it doesn't necessarily have they're not like, oh, I will only read X genre if it's right one of one of your books they're probably going to read across your catalog mm-hmm. because you have that same tone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um yeah and the other thing she mentioned was that it's introverts like this it's very comfortable for introverts right. because there's not a, you're not dependent on social media or a personality like your personality mm-hmm. and um a lot of the newsletter is content focused for mm-hmm. authors like this and so i think this is the type of author i am because mm-hmm. i've noticed that like all my newsletters, I'm like, Hey, here's other books like this that you might like to try. Mm -hmm. I'm always about like, I don't tell a whole lot of personal stories and stuff Mm -hmm. in my newsletter. I'm always like, here, this is a fun quiz here. You know, this is stuff you can do that's related to mysteries. Right. So, yeah. Well, and if you listen to you, which our listeners do, (laughs) but you are always talking about how you can expand on I mean, like the things you do are book related, like yes. your, your sale coming up, your, yeah. um, your, um, the Kickstarter, Kickstarter. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, well, sounds like, um, uh, but yeah, the Kickstarter, 
all those things. So yeah, I mean, I would definitely say this yeah. is true of you for sure. I I think about uh, like the Zodiac Academy books that mm-hmm. have been so, so, so popular. Um, to me that when I was listening to this, that's what I thought of because people are just like, consuming those books one right after the other Mm -hmm. and um not really reading one going on to something else they're just so that that was something I was thinking about when yeah did any other oh here let's do the downsides real quick oh yeah she she did pros and cons so kind of the downsides for this type of author vertical platform is you must have the hooks to get the readers in so like Mm -hmm. if you you may have the best you know sci-fi type story but if you don't have the right cover and the right reader magnet or whatever you're going to have a hard time getting people into your world right and then so you have to do the research and development that you need to to figure out what will appeal to those readers but then once you figure that out then you've got them in and like for me i think when i was writing cozy mysteries (laughs) those were good Mm -hmm. so when i was writing cozy mysteries i think those were fine and good Mm -hmm. but the historicals are just a much stronger hook for some they reason. Are. They're, they're mm-hmm. a better match for me and my writing style and my personality right. for some reason. And so that yeah. draws in the people much more. And people, mm-hmm. once they're in, they'll go back and read some of the other things, mm-hmm. but they don't. But what pulls them in is the historical. Yeah. So did you think of any other authors who kind of, who we think <laughs> in our mm-hmm. wisdom, maybe yes. have this type of platform? <laughs> um. I, I mean, there are, of course, none are coming to mind, well, but, but this morning I just thought of like, I think maybe Lindsay Broker is Oh like yes, this. absolutely. Absolutely. Because Lindsay can write adjacent type things mm-hmm. or even, you know, I mean, she does her fantasies, but then she has fantasy romance. Mm-hmm. Now I, she has said that the readers don't cross over, but She's giving the same experience in both of those mm-hmm. books. And she's you really know, prolific. And she always says, very you know, prolific. Yeah. Would I be better off just writing the next book? And I think maybe if that's kind of your mantra, like, oh, I think I'll just write another book, mm-hmm. it's easier than doing all that social media. Right, maybe right, this right, is right, the right. type of author you are. Right. Right. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And um, Marie Force, she mm-hmm. comes to mind for me too, you know, just super prolific. And part of the gold rush in the early days, but still super prolific. And, um, you know, the books are, books are keen for her. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what about person? Do you want to do person? <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be an author who's really good on so- social media, more diverse in the type of content they have. Readers strongly connect with the author and primarily about Reader that they're more about reader author connections. Um, their offers often slower to produce a product, um, uh, and ha- often have platforms named after themselves. So, um, I don't think any author comes to mind for this one for me. <laughs> really, really, Jamie. <laughs> As I have behind me, Jamie Albright on the wall. I have it. It's I have it in letters on the wall. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I am this. This is the yeah. vertical uh, platform that I thrive best in. Um, yeah. And actually, Claire Taylor told me. I guess about the second year into my career, she said, "You're you should." you should tie your branding to your name because just because of this, my Mm -hmm. personality and because, you know, I do, I do tend to connect well, I'm number five woo. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I can um, cause a riot and uh, get a, (laughs) no, I mean, you know, I can, I can, do you, that. Pull, and I, you pull people to pull you people and people me, are yes. interested in meeting you and talking to you and it's, I don't know they love that, your books yeah. and they, they do love writer, my books. Yes. But yes. there's something extra special. They're like, Oh, mm-hmm. I want to talk to Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, in the past I've done a much better job of this than I have, you know, over the last some months, but, um, but I think because I laid that foundation, 
that has served me during this time when I'm not producing, when I kind of feel lost and don't want to connect with anyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Mm -hmm. and because my readers are still, we're here, just don't worry about us. Take care of you. We're here. And, um, and that is super comforting, super, Mm -hmm. super comforting, comforting because, um, you know, I, it is scary. It's scary to think, you know, where where I'm at right now that I might lose readers and stuff. And I'm I, I have and I will. But there were there are other readers at, that that I will find and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but your your truest fans are going to stick mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. Y- even yeah. if you don't produce a book for years. So no. But like, talk about your newsletter content because it's very different from what I do. No, like yeah. When you send out a newsletter, yours was more focused on stories, right? About stories about myself. Yes. Yeah. I would do. I mean, you know, when I was when I would go out in public, there was always something, or not always, but usually <laughs> something crazy happened, embarrassing um, happened, and so, uh, you know, that's that's how it was. I mean, and actually, the very first newsletter I sent out. The very first one, when I only had 2,500 people on my newsletter list, only when I had 2,500, I know, when I had 2,500 <laughs> people on my newsletter list, the very first story, and this was before the book came out, was the story about me putting on my daughter's pants, thinking they were mine and thinking That's I had gained all this sweet weight in like a week. And I'm like, <laughs> holy cow like not being able to sit down but didn't want my husband to know that's what what, what I was doing because I I didn't I mean it was just this it's this whole crazy story and but I wanted my readers to know like that's what you're getting from me like yeah so this is the ride if you want to stay on the ride hang on and we're gonna this is how we're going mm-hmm. um I think of uh like Lucy score Pippa yeah. Grant you know, those are, um, I mean, their books are great, but they are big personalities that really De- Deanna Roy, who writes as JJ Knight, same mm-hmm. thing. Um, and so I think that, uh, my newsletter has actually been a way for me to connect with readers in a way that, that maybe some other authors don't because of the content that I share, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, humiliating myself all the time. (laughs) And um, so I I share that, but of course that's part of my brand too. I mean, that is my brand, this funny, lighthearted, let's not take anything too seriously Mm -hmm. thing. Um, So you have to know that too. Yeah. yeah. And I think, um, so yeah, when I listened to that podcast, the first time I was like, Jamie, Jamie is number is a number two vertical the person. And I was like, curious to see if you saw that too. When you listened. Oh, I did. I yeah. did. Because the upsides of this are important to see fans as a group instead of individuals. Um, and I do, I mean, you know, like I do see the individuals, but it is mm-hmm. this group that I want. I want to make sure they're cared for. I guess yeah. is how, how I think about it. Um, and that's why it worries me when I can't get a book out to them because I know they would love to one. take care of them. Yeah, I would. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then they allows authors to create content. That's not just books, which is true. That is like, and probably I should do more lives and um, things like that. Um But I will tell you, if I did a live, there would probably be two people on there to begin with. But I do believe I could build that up. Yeah, you could. If that was like one of your If that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. 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 You don't have to, but I think you, you know, that is one of the ways. that would be a way you can do it. Well, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Were you going to do the... Yeah, Yeah. the downside is, you know, finding the time to create the content. And that has always... (laughs) From the beginning, been the challenge, you know, because when my books took off or my book took off, when I first released it, the first book, you know, it was hard to finish that second book because, Mm -hmm. and I didn't have very much left to finish. 
it was almost done, but I needed to edit and stuff, but it took me six months because, well, Mm -hmm. not quite six months, but you know, it was six months between releases because I couldn't stop just engaging and getting involved with people and doing all the things. So so yeah, that is a downside. Yeah. So if you're, if you love social media, Mm -hmm. this might be something, if you're this type of author, this social media is probably comes really easy to you, mm-hmm. you know, and you love it probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. the person I think of with this one is um, Tanya Kappas because yes. she, she like people love her books, mm-hmm. but they love Tanya and like um, her newsletter. It's about what she's been doing. It's like, she shares mm-hmm. like information mm-hmm. about like her life, like they're building a house and mm-hmm. like, this is her pets and all this stuff in her family. She's got mm-hmm. tons of, just stuff about her and her life. Yeah. And so I think her readers are just connected into connecting with Tanya. Yeah. And she does all kinds of interesting things like a mystery train mm-hmm. dinner event mm-hmm. thing. So, yeah. yeah, I think authors that have that kind of charisma, mm-hmm. this is like a great thing for them to lean into. And right. I know like reading through this, this is definitely not me and it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because, because there are other avenues and, and another thing about Tanya is people love her world too. It's not yes. just, it's not yes. just the books, but they love her world. And so. Yeah. And um, that was the other thing Becca pointed out is that if you're saying that like the books are the thing or the person's the thing or the world, it's not that like you can't have all three things, yeah. like yeah. you can't, like not that you're not don't have good books or you don't have a good world. It's just mm-hmm. that like the main thing, the main attraction mm-hmm. is the person or the books. And then you mm-hmm. can have all these other things in mm-hmm. like varying degrees. Yeah. 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 All right. So should we move on to the third one? Yeah, let's move on. Okay. So the third one is the world. The third mm-hmm. author vertical mm-hmm. is the world. And uh, Becca said it's very common for science fiction and fantasy, but it's not actually limited to those genres. And um, some examples she gave were books and series that you just get so immersed in the world. Mm -hmm, It's like mm -hmm. you just want more of that world. Mm -hmm. You want to live there. You want to, she mentioned tattoos, Mm -hmm. like people who get things tattooed on their body. Like there's not going to be any tattooing going on in the Sarah Rosette fan world. (laughs) Maybe in other worlds there might be. (laughs) Craig Jamie, if she can't watch so anyway so as she mentioned the witcher the last Mm -hmm. of us and marvel so those are some examples and a lot of them they're multi like those examples are like multimedia like there's the yeah because there's the games and the comic yeah 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 Yeah. so and the readers are engaged uh in a world and identify as if they are existing inside that world so like Mm -hmm. a lot of fan fiction Mm -hmm. um and you get the multiple experiences Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. the tv shows and Mm -hmm. stuff like that Mm -hmm. So I, this one was harder for me to think of. Um, oh, I can think of Twilight. Oh, you go. <laughs> Twilight, Fifty Shades of Grey, that yeah. whole world. I mean, as far as not sci-fi fantasy kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, the Witcher, The Last of Us. Yes, absolutely. Um, and like Harry Potter. I Harry think. Potter. Um, the... Um, um, well, a lot of Lindsay's books you know, the sci-fi books and mm-hmm. the, and then her fantasy books and stuff. Um, um, Brandon Sandifer's books, you um, know, of course he's a person yeah. too. He's a personality yeah. too, but you know, the books and stuff. Uh, but I was giving you examples, Twilight and yeah, yeah. Shades are, um, you know, non-sci-fi They're... fantasy. Right. Um, you know, um, like um, Jack Reacher, who um, who writes him, you know who I'm talking about. Yes, and I'm trying to say the name, and I can't Mm-mm, say it right me, now. Me too. You guys are at home <laughs> yelling at us. Oops. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um. But yeah, I mean that kind of thing where you have these book these worlds where you know, of course, like in the Jack Reacher books and um and Jack Ryan books, you know. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of change in those characters. Those characters are pretty flat. Lee Child. Lee Child. Yes. Child. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and you're right. Like Sherlock. Like yeah. people like to be in that world and write fan fiction about that world. That may be partly because it's been 
around mm-hmm. so long, mm-hmm. but there is like this whole, like, what would you call it? Like a cottage industry around mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Sherlock Holmes and mm-hmm. Jane Austen mm-hmm. and these Marvel comics. Mm-hmm. But I will say too, like uh, some of the angstier books, uh, romance books, um, like Colleen Hoover's books and um, um well, of course, she's the only one that comes to mind. <laughs> it's okay. But, you know, the darker, more angsty books, even though most of those are not series, most of those are uh, at, at best duets, but mostly mm-hmm. they're standalone. I've seen a number of tattoos from those books because it's that whole, it's a world of angst. It's a world mm-hmm. of this emotion and not mm-hmm. just angst, but you know what I'm saying? It's like they want, so that's a book thing, but also this world of, yeah. I want to live in this place. But mm-hmm. I will say that the series that we mentioned, all the stuff we mentioned before that are probably more in the world. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Platform. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's see the, the upsides of this is that the fans will create content for the world, mm-hmm. like fan art and fan fiction, mm-hmm. and they're going to be amazing evangelist for mm-hmm. whatever world they're in. Yeah. And they're going to create a lot of the spaces for, mm-hmm. you know, discord channels yep. and yep. Yep. things like that. Um, and I don't remember any downsides. I don't, do I can't think of any downsides. <laughs> no. I mean, come on. You just want people to rabbit about your world. I mean, possibly showing up at your doorstep, you know. That could be uh, a downside, yes. Rest as the witcher could be a problem. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, she talked about cosplay, too. I mean, yeah. there's just all of this stuff that when people start creating, um, it cre- like they create a community and then they mm-hmm. begin to create their own stuff. That is mm-hmm. what is so exciting. And that's one of the things that Jennifer, um, Jennifer Barnes, Lynn Barnes, Jennifer yeah. Lynn Barnes yeah. uh, talks about too. And um, yeah, it, that's the goal in my opinion, <laughs> <laughs> is to, but not everybody, not, not everybody's work is cut out. To fit right, that to be mold. that, right. yeah. yeah. Oh, or like Bridgerton, like when that came oh, out, yes. people they mm-hmm. just wanted to like they have Bridgerton parties now yeah. and all that. So yeah, Alexa that's another. Just, uh, she just coordinated a Bridgerton um, wedding themed, shower, like yeah, Bridgerton yeah. theme wedding shower. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think the big thing with this is that in a way, this really it makes me feel so much better because I come to the conclusion that like certain readers and genres just don't do things that other genre readers do. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. my readers are not going to be doing like a discord and writing fan art Mm -hmm. or fan fiction and creating Mm -hmm. fan art. They're probably just not going to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think this is really good because it lets me go, Oh, if I'm going to create extra content or if I'm going to do a Kickstarter, then let me focus on these things that are the best match for me in my and type your of platform. readers. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, I think that's really smart. And I think that's a good thing to take away from this. And so for me, and really we encourage y'all, please go listen to this. Yeah. Uh, and we may have actually Becca on at some point. Yeah. <laughs> so she can talk about it and actually tell you, you know, explain it so much better than us. But for me, it made me feel better because, um, you know, of where I'm at, but Mm -hmm. I would think anyone who's been like trying to produce and keep up and churn in that wheel and really is feeling burned out or just they can't do it, that seeing this and knowing where you can focus your energy um, in a different place and still get really good results. I, I, to me, that's just encouraging. And yeah, uh, I I I agree. Like, yeah, I agree. And I think it takes a lot of the pressure off yes. because you're like, you know what? I don't have to do X, Y, and Z because that's not going to be a good match for me, even mm-hmm. though, because there's a lot of things that go on where people are like, well, this is what I did. I did mm-hmm. one, two, three, four, mm-hmm. and I was successful. And it's easy to look at that and go, oh, well, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, and then I'll be successful too. And mm-hmm. 
it oftentimes does not happen. And then mm-hmm. you feel, you know, yeah. depressed. And she, she <laughs> actually talks about how, because she had talked about um, before on a different thing about, you know, what makes a book, what makes people successful, mm-hmm. content uh, or produ- producing books, content, luck, and mm-hmm. something else. And, um, but she said, you know, if you, if you can't produce content and you don't feel like you can slide into that lucky spot, then this gives you something more tangible to, to work towards. Now, will it work? We don't know, but it's okay if it, you try it and it doesn't, because we're going to fail better faster. That's right. We're going to figure it out. And, and you're you going to fail so fast. Yeah. <laughs> It's so good. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. Um, but <laughs> but um, I think what she she says more than once that it can, success can be achieved just because the gold rush is over doesn't mean we can't find success and make money and do all the things we want to do. They just have to be done now, maybe in a different way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we were very quick to adopt the write more books and you'll be successful, yeah. you know, cause because that's so simple and so easy yeah. to do. I mean, well, really easy. Theoretically. But, yes. But, but it's like easy to control. think, Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and a lot of these, a lot of times you can't control things. So yeah, I think that 90, just, 99% <laughs> of the time. Yeah. Can't control anything. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so, so that's kind of the summary. Did you, I think that was like all we had down to kind of talk about. Yeah, I Um, think that was it. I think we covered most of it, but I really did love how she just kept coming back to that whole, you can still find success. You can still do this. If you do something and it doesn't work, don't like, I think, you know, there's this pressure to um, achieve and, um, you know, certainly I feel it. I'm sure we all feel it. And that Everything is not dependent on one one turn of the dial kind of thing. Like that doesn't work, but there are other things you can do. And we just have to keep moving forward and trying the things, you know, and don't be afraid of failure, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's like my whole Mm. new phase of learning. is like, Okay. Let's just do it and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. I mean, run it up the flagpole and see if anybody salutes. That's uh, (laughs) That's kind of my it's thought a, too. Yeah. It's a challenge, but we're getting there. So, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. So we'll put the link to the new rules of publishing video. It's a whole series. She has mm-hmm. at least three videos out about the yeah. new rules of publishing, how things are changing. Mm-hmm. And so this one is just one of those. So we'll put the link to that. And um, the other thing I forgot to mention earlier is that we have our first private zoom chat coming up. Oh yes. Yes. Woo-hoo! Yeah. So this will be for supporters and it's um, April 6th at 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. And um, we're going to send out a Zoom link so people can sign in. Haven't done that yet. So if you haven't received it, don't panic, but yeah. it will be going out soon. And if you want to become a supporter, you can go to wish I'd known for writers.com slash support mm-hmm. and get in and bring your questions and we will chat about whatever y'all want to chat about. Yeah. And we just are so grateful for our supporters. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, it's really, it's kind of invigorated us, I think, it has. to see it that has. there's people who are interested and yes. we're very thankful. Yeah. And um, this past week, we have 4,000 downloads of the podcast. Like that's really, that is a big number for us too. And so, I mean, we've had that before, but I don't know, it just feels really yeah. good. And we appreciate yeah. you guys so, so much, so much. Yes. And we appreciate that you're recommending us and telling people about us um and we'll try to keep producing content that um makes you want to recommend us so yeah uh and also i put it in the group but i don't know you know for those of you not in our facebook group and why aren't you you should come (laughs) but um the six figure author podcast had a new episode this week um they're just going to be doing them kind of as they come and i will tell you if you need to feel good and and you need to feel affirmed, listen to that episode. It was very good. Uh, and then the Spa Girls had Brighton Walsh on last week, and it was about TikTok. And Brighton is 
she's really done well with TikTok. She's, she's so smart. And um, it, I learned, I learned a lot and I'm on TikTok all the time. So um, awesome. That's great. Yeah. So that just is great. let you know about those things. Yeah. 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 I think everybody's excited about a new six figure authors podcast. They're going to be mm-hmm. like the only podcast that like they can release a podcast every eh, couple of months. Yeah. Get, get <laughs> great. Downloads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so we'll put links to those podcasts too yeah. in the show notes and those will be at wish I'd known for writers.com mm-hmm. and anything else? Nope. That's it. Okay. We're good. All right. Well then thanks to Alexa Larberg for editing and producing the podcast and to Adriel Wiggins for doing all the admin. Yep. Bye everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening to the wish I'd known then podcast. We hope this episode inspired you, empowered you and made you laugh a little bit too. If you loved it, Tell your friends about it. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a review. We look forward to being with you again next week.